Greetings, my good friend. Welcome to the podcast show, Touching People for Heaven, with your host, Preacher John. Let's pray before we get started. Lord Jesus, we pray in your name that there will be something here on this show, in this episode, that we're able to use in our life, in the life of our family, and in the lives of our friends, and in the lives of people we haven't met yet. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you, my friend. I hope all is wonderful with your soul, and thank you for being here right now and listening. This is ep- podcast episode number 73, and is published on Sunday, August 8th, 2021, and is titled, They Overcame Him. The title is found in Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, and I'll read it to you from the King James Bible. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. And this is episode 73, and you are listening to the podcast show, John Shuck is Touching People for Heaven, with your host, yours truly, Preacher John. We use this Sunday prayer letter on our show, our podcast. Every episode we do use the Sunday prayer letter that is written for our church and for our street ministers. The show is a little different than the letter. Uh, The letter is posted on the website. The letter goes out in email, and the letter is obviously on this show also. The letter has a format to it that helps us all stay in similar scriptures, or let me rephrase that, the same scriptures. And when we're all in the same identical scriptures, it provides all of us a one accord. We're all speaking the same word. We're working out of the same Bible. We're all in the same family, speaking the same word and doing the same thing for one God. And it provides a lot of power That uh, is quite unique to our church, Gospel Evangelist Church here in Boulder and in Colorado. My name is Preacher John, and I'm filming, or not filming, sorry, I do videos every day, so I'm I'm so used to saying film, but I'm recording this show here in Boulder. Uh, It's a Saturday afternoon. I spend the entire day resting in the Lord. This is my Sabbath. This is the seventh day the Lord rested. And about four and a half years ago, the Lord asked me to set aside the Saturday as a Sabbath unto the Lord and to Him, to rest in Him. And that's what I do. I get up in the morning, and it's just the entire day in the Lord. It's sort of like what the Apostle John wrote in Revelation. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. And that's just about exactly what it feels like on this day and every Saturday that I spend with the Lord. And towards the end of the day, I sit down with the Holy Spirit and we write the Sunday prayer letter. And it'll go out tomorrow morning, Sunday morning at 5 a.m. Boulder time. And I'll begin preaching on the letter. And so will everyone else be begin preaching on the letter beginning Sunday morning and going all the way through till next Saturday. I don't preach on Saturday. I do take a Sabbath. But there's there are many who do preach or some that do preach on Saturday. Uh, as we all know, the... Honoring the Sabbath is not a law or a solid requirement like it was in the Old Testament. Anyways, that's another story there. I'm not going to go there. Um, but let's go back into a letter. So I use this Sunday prayer letter as a script for the show. And that's what I read off of as I do the episode. And I get off track a little bit or a side note or a sidebar. And I'll ad lib a few places here to add a little more Uh, what would you say, a little more (laughs) spice (laughs) to the letter? I don't know. But uh, another thing I want to say before I start the letter is everything that I do and say and act and whatever happens stays on the show. I, on purpose, by the direction of the Holy Ghost, do not edit out any of the blurps or the mishaps or the cough or the sneeze or whatever the cases may be. And the reason and the purpose why I leave everything on the show is that when someone is starting something like this, a podcast or a video channel, and they look around, they see everyone looks so 
perfect and so pristine and absolute flawless. What a brand new person doesn't realize is that all the problems have been edited out and all you see is the perfection of everything. And that, I see, stops a lot of people. It stopped me personally from pursuing uh, this type of medium because I make so many mistakes. How could I be as good as they are? And I spent years trying to be good, trying to be perfect, and never did a show, never did a video because I never could get perfect. And I just, for some reason, it didn't occur to me that they were actually cutting all those pieces out. I, I, for some reason, that never occurred to me. I know it seems obvious when you mention it, but if you're not aware of it, it is not obvious. <laughs> so that's one of the reasons why I leave everything in the podcast and in the videos and in my letter and um, things that I do. So now that we've got that rambling off, and we'll get into our letter and we'll see what the Holy Ghost has for us. The letter here, it says, Greetings, friend. Another amazing week has begun. This could be our opportunity to do something great for the kingdom of God. As the Holy Scriptures tells us, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And this is good news from a far country, like cold waters to a thirsty soul. Amen. I put a note in the letter here. I put Proverbs 25, 25, and I put Matthew 6, 33. That's where those two little quotes came from. In the letter, it says, let's start in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for all that you are doing and have done and are going to do. There is so much more to know of you. We love you, Father God, and thank you for sending the Lord Jesus Christ to bring the believers, the born-again saints of the Most High, to your kingdom forever, even forever and ever. And thank you, Holy Ghost, for giving us the power to live and serve as the servants of God. We love you, Holy Spirit, and in your holy name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Scrolling down through our letter, it says the following is our summary outline of scriptures for this week of preaching. I have an asterisk right beside that, and I'll scroll down to the asterisk. It says, you may view the this week of street preaching videos for this letter on the video channel for desktop. It would be youtube.com forward slash, and then my name, John, C-H-O-Q-U-E, John Shuck. Or for mobile, just put an M in front of the youtube.com forward slash, my name, John, C-H-O-Q-U-E. And God willing, we may be teaching and preaching on these seven parts throughout this week in Jesus' name. So August 8th, Sunday prayer letter, Revelation 12, 11, the title of our letter is They Overcame Him. Again, it's found in Revelation 12, 11. And again, I will read it to you because it's such an important scripture. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. The word seed is testimony in this letter. I realize sometimes that I, and almost every time or every time, I put the seed as a title. But for some reason, this is not the case for this letter. Sort of like last letter was a little different, and this letter is also a little different. So once again, the Uh, The seed that we're planting is testimony. And in that testimony, we overcome him. Uh, Over him, the H-I-M in this letter is Satan, the thief. And uh, we'll talk more about that a little bit later. So in the letter, we have seven parts, uh, each part for each day of the week. I preach six days a week, starting on Sunday morning and go away to Friday night. And so I'll read the scriptures for each of the days. Part one will be on Sunday, Exodus 16, verses 32 through 36. Part two will be on Monday, Exodus 25, verses 16, 21, and 22. Part three on Tuesday, Psalm 19, verses 1 through 14. Part four on Wednesday, John 5, verses 19 through 47. Part 5 for Thursday, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 12. Part 6 will be on Friday, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 5. 
in part 7, Saturday, coming back around to the beginning, Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Gospel Evangelist Church uses the authorized King James Bible for all scripture references. And please note, though, that these scriptures and outline are simply a framework of sorts for each of us to preach and minister from, so that as a church body, we are all in one accord throughout the week. This does not include your own study of the Word of Truth with the Holy Ghost, who may have you in several different parts of the Holy Scriptures. This outline is used to demonstrate one accord for us who are of the same family, so to speak, namely Gospel Evangelist Church. Amen. So allow me to preface some of these scriptures and mention why they were selected to be placed into this discourse letter. First, let me say that there are about 169 verses with the word seed testimony that we are using in this letter. Testimony is T-E-S-T-I-M-O-N-Y, testimony. In a similar manner, the following scriptures have a fashion type that points to the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Without Jesus, there would be no point in even writing this letter. We would just eat, drink, be merry, and die. However, this is not, capital N-O-T, not the case. In fact, let's place a definition of testimony here. From uh, Webster's 1828 Dictionary. The reason I use Webster's 1828 Dictionary is because this particular dictionary, which is one of the first ones in America, uh, is based on the King James Bible. It's based on the Word of God. It's not based on man's thought of what it should mean. It's actually based on what God wants that word to mean. So uh, I don't write all the scripture references to this in the, but uh, Webster's dictionary does have numerous scriptures that he used to define uh, his words in his dictionary. It's really fantastic, really fantastic. It's also a part of my uh, software that I use to write my letter and to do a lot of my study, <clears throat> which is the Sword Searcher, S W O R D Sword. S-E-A-R-C-H-E-R, -E Sword Searcher. And you can go to swordsearcher.com and see what that's all about. So let's go back here to Webster's 1828 Dictionary, Testimony. It's a Latin word, and it means a solemn declaration or affirmation made for the purpose of establishing or proving some fact. Such affirmation in judicial proceedings may be verbal or written, but must be under oath. Testimony differs from evidence. Testimony is the declaration of a witness, and evidence is the effect of that declaration on the mind or the degree of light which it affords. <clears throat> Another definition would be the first mention in the Holy Bible, and that would be in Exodus 16.34, As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept. And in the, diction, uh, in the Bible, testimony is capitalized, which means it points to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is our testimony. And it's the only time that testimony is capitalized in the other 168 times that this word is used. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> it made, it uh, was kind of a, uh, startled me for a minute. I looked at that for a long time as I sat down and started going over this letter. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. It's one of the reasons I like doing this show, because I can kind of add a few things in, as you just saw. It's, uh, I love doing these shows. I also do love, I love doing the videos, too. So going back to our letter here, these definitions may not clarify what I'm seeing, but we'll just keep moving through our letter and even through our podcast, and we'll include this week's street sermon videos <clears throat> on this seed. 
It should be very interesting to watch what the Holy Ghost will be teaching us on this word. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It looks like um, we'll just be placing the scriptures here in the letter and on the show because there are many and it will take some time to read through each one. In this manner, the Holy Ghost will have room to teach each of us on these scriptures throughout the week. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm, I'm going to make a little side note again here is I actually kept the entire um, address, the scripture, but I did not put the whole thing into the letter because uh, some of these parts are extremely long. Uh, one of them is an entire chapter. Uh, that's something that I sat there and prayed over for a long time. I put them in the letter, but it just was so overwhelming. I prayed for quite some time, asking the Holy Spirit to help me to trim it down to a more uh, a palatable, um, digestible way in a letter. And then I will uh, ad lib, or I will add to, or I will enlarge it as I preach on the streets in the videos. And uh, but not on the letter here. We're not going to. I mean, not in the podcast. We won't go. We won't be going through the entire scripture base that uh, the Holy Ghost originally gave me. And you'll see in just a minute what I mean by that. So August eighth Sunday prayer letter, Revelation twelve eleven. They overcame him is the title. Revelation twelve eleven. I'll read it. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. So part one is Sunday, Exodus 16, verses 32 through 36. And uh, so here we go. This part here in part one on Sunday is actually the entire 32 through 3, 4, 5. So it looks like five verses, and I put them all here. But the others, I uh, kind of shortened them down. So Exodus chapter 16, verses 32 through 36, and I'll just read it to you. And Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord commandeth, fill an omer of it to be kept for your generations, that they may see the bread wherewith I have fed you in the wilderness when I brought you forth from the land of Egypt. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a pot and put an omer full of manna therein, manna, sorry, <laughs> and lay it up before the Lord to be kept for your generations. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept. And the children of Israel did eat manna forty years until they came to a land inhabited. They did eat manna until they came into the borders of the land of Canaan. Now an omer, O-M-E-R, omer, is the tenth part of an ephah. And an ephah in U.S. is about six to seven gallons. And that's a tenth. So that's a tithe. So that's, I find that to be very fascinating that God even tithed on himself or tithed the... the um, it, it, you can, your mind can just go in so many different directions because in this passage, God validates, at least in the Old Testament, validates... Uh, the the uh, tithing <laughs> that's just really good tithing it, it's it's amazing actually <laughs> it's amazing and so many people just put that down I I love being a tither myself I give a tenth of the part that God gave me back to God and that's my seed back into the kingdom of God I think tithing is such a subject that needs to be talked about in the body of Christ, especially what's coming up in the future. And uh, if you need a full measure coming into you and you have not been sowing to reap that full measure on earth, uh, I'm just making mention, and I thought this is very fascinating. Uh, it just jumped right out at me. And this is part of the um, verse that has the first mention of the word testimony, which is capitalized, which points to Jesus Christ as our testimony, as born again. 
Yeah, well, we'll just scroll through the letter. Part two is on. Will be on Monday. <clears throat> Exodus twenty-five, verses sixteen, twenty-one, and twenty-two. Uh, on the video, I will read all three verses. But here in this letter, I'm just going to use sixteen because it is the o- only verse that actually has the word testimony. Exodus twenty-five, sixteen, and thou shalt put into the ark the testimony which I shall give thee. Amen. Part 3 will be on Tuesday, Psalm 19, verses 1 through 14. And that is actually the entire Psalm of 19. There's 14 verses in that Psalm. However, I took them all out and I just left the one single verse that had the word testimony. And that's verse 17, Psalm 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Praise the Lord. Part 4 will be on Wednesday. It's John 5, 19 through 47. Once again, that's a huge section of Scripture, but it's a, it's a word that Jesus gave. And I had it all in the letter, but it just was so huge. And I'm hoping that I will be able to actually read that whole passage on the video. Don't know yet, but we'll see what happens. However, in that passage, John 5, 34 is the only uh, scripture that has the word testimony. And so John chapter 5, verses 34, it says, But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say, that you might be saved. So once again, Jesus is saying that by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be saved because he himself is the testimony. And when you give testimony, you invite that evidence into your life and that establishes you in the law of salvation. And so if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, just give him a call. Give Jesus a call. That's what Romans 10, uh, 10, 13 says. Whoever, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you don't know who the name of the Lord is, because it says whosoever shall call upon the name, uh, the name is Jesus Christ. Uh, you can do something like I did oh, so long ago. I laid in my bunk on board a Navy ship. I'm Vietnam vet, U.S. Navy. And I just said, Jesus, if you're real, here I am. And that began a whole entire new life as a new creature in Christ. And I have been with the Lord every day since then. That was over 47 years ago, and I have not turned my back, not turned to the left, nor turned to the right. I have kept my eyes upon Jesus. And how that's happened is beyond my understanding. Somehow, some way, the Lord Jesus Christ has kept me. Hallelujah. And I pray He saves you and keeps you too, my friend. If you just received Christ, if you just prayed and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you jump into the Bible, go to the book of John that's in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and just go to the third chapter, verse 16. It's the most famous verse in the world. And it says, uh, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in Him shall be saved, shall believe, uh, be saved. Sorry, I didn't mean, didn't mean to mess that up. I, I don't always have Scripture memorized, so I just want you to go to the book, look for, chapter, for John, go to chapter 3, verse 16, and just read that and study it. And go over and over and over and over. Then read the verses above it, the verses below that Scripture, and until you get the whole story of what Jesus is talking about, and then when you're done with that, go back to the beginning of the book of John, the Gospel of John, and chapter 1, verse 1, and just read through in the entire book of John, slowly and deliberately with God, with the Spirit of God. And then if led to, continue on to the next book, which is the book of Acts, A-C-T-S, Acts. That's the beginning of the New Testament church. And those two books are right together. And if you feel still led, the very next book after that is the verse uh, in Romans. That's the book of Romans, which I gave you that verse, chapter 10, verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So those three books right together will give you a good, solid foundation. And if you don't don't live in Boulder, um, look for a good, solid Bible preaching church. 
Uh, preferably they're preaching out of the King James, and then if they are preaching out of the King James, look around for the evidence that the people have the love of God. The love of God must be evident in that church. Amen? And if you're in Boulder, you're more than welcome to come to Gospel Evangelist Church. Just get a hold of me, and we'll point you into the direction of where our location is. All right, so now we'll jump back into the Bible, uh, right back into our letter, and I don't even know where I am now. Oh, there it is, right there. Part, part 5 is on Thursday. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, part 5, Thursday, 2 Corinthians 1, cha- uh, verse 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 12. For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience, that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world, and more abundantly to you word. Isn't that amazing, you word? That's a, that's a pretty cool word. I mean, he's pointing it right to you, my friend. <laughs> Not scattering it. It's like a rifle shot. <laughs> Part six will be on Friday in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 5. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. Amen. Not good. Part 7, the last part, Saturday, we're going back to the beginning, Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Now, I have a choice. I could either teach a little bit on that, but I, I'm going to make the choice. I just looked over to see how long the podcast has been running. It's over 20, it's about 27 minutes coming up on right about now. It just hit 27. I think I'll just finish. And if you would like to know more on the scriptures through the letter, you can simply go to the uh, video channel and uh, take a peek and listen and watch what the Holy Spirit made uh, teach us on the video channel. (laughs) Or come out to the banner. You can go to my calendar and uh, on my website and find out where I may be at, and uh, you can watch what the Holy Ghost does right there on the street. It's pretty good. So let's go back to our letter here, and we'll finish up in prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving us your word, and thank you for sending the promise of the Father, the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost so that we may learn of you and learn your word and be able to study the word of truth. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for teaching us all things. And thank you for testifying of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And my letter is signed, In the Comfort of the Comforter. With my initials, J.C. for John Shuck. Below my initials are three scriptures, Genesis 5.29, And he called his name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands, because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. Matthew 5, 4, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 16 and 17, Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us, and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Amen and amen. Well, there you go, folks. This is my Sunday prayer letter. It was written Saturday, August 7th, 2021 at 4.18 p.m. Boulder, Colorado. It's written by John Shuck, street preacher, church builder, founding pastor, and missionary. Our ministry website is johnshuck.org, a C-H-O-Q-U-E. Video channels, youtube.com forward slash my name, John, J-O-H-N, C-H-O-Q-U-E. Subscribe to letter at preacherjohn.ck. Dot page an opportunity would be work with John Shuck C H O Q U E dot com. God bless you, my friend. I love you very much. Bye bye.